Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's nice to be here. Thank you so much for putting this together. It's really remarkable to see um, what these high schoolers have been able to do. So congratulations to all of you on this great event. Um, yes, my name is Karen Hassar. Um, I do teach at Curry College in Human Development and Psychology. Um, I do have four children who are here in the dover Sherburne School District. Um, today, I am going to be talking to you about moral development. And um, I'm going to be talking about this um, through the work that I do with young children, but I hope through the course of my talk that you'll be able to see how these different concepts that I talk about and address with children apply to teenagers as well as adults. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about moral reasoning. And when we think about moral reasoning, the idea here is that we want to see how individuals are interpreting events and if they're interpreting them as being moral or immoral. Um, or if also they're seeing them as you know, not even worthy of any type of judgment. So it's about that idea of interpreting events. And specifically, my research looks at the, this lens of moral developments through what's known as social domain theory. So social domain theory argues that we can understand children's and adults' moral reasoning when we think about how actions or events occur in different social settings. And it's really important to consider those social settings when we think about how someone is going to interpret an action. So social domain theorists argue for three different domains or like categories or buckets when it comes to classifying actions. So there's the moral domain, the social conventional domain, and the personal domain. So I'm going to spend a few minutes going through each one of those. Um, before I do that, I just you know, want to reiterate that my work has been done with children. The research results that I'm going to share with you today are uh, applicable to 6 to 10-year-olds, but social domain theorists have really found these same results with high school students as well. So it's not just um, relevant to uh, children, uh, children's reasoning. OK, so I'm going to start with this moral domain. So social domain theorists argue that in this moral domain, right, this moral bucket or category, um, we think about actions that um, are surrounding issues of welfare, so harm. And this can be physical harm, let's say like pushing someone or tripping them. It can also be psychological harm, let's say teasing someone or bullying them. Um, the moral domain also focuses on issues of fairness. So this might be something like cheating or plagiarizing, and also rights, like what are our rights? Um, so when I work with my young children participants, I'll share story cards with them. And this story card here, uh, related to Susan, is an example of an event that would occupy this moral domain. So the next domain is social conventional domain. And this domain differs from the moral domain in that it really is focused on social norms and not disrupting the social order. So we think about what is appropriate behavior in different social contexts. So for example, let's take this auditorium right now. So as I look around, I see that everybody is sitting in seats. Um, I'm not seeing anybody having like a side conversation. No one's screaming across the auditorium, right? Um, no one's sitting on the back of chairs. But imagine if there was a rehearsal going on for graduation here, right? There may be some high school students in that particular context, right, who would be sitting on the back of their chairs or might be having a side conversation or might be screaming across the auditorium to their friends. So the idea is in different social contexts, different behaviors are appropriate and inappropriate. So you can think about a high schooler who's walking down the hallway with a baseball cap on. They might get detention for that but out on the baseball field, completely acceptable behavior, right? So that's the important issue here with this social domain, excuse me, with its uh, social conventional domain. It's really thinking about appropriate behavior in different social contexts. And then there's the personal domain. And this is different from the moral domain and the social conventional domain because this just relates to an individual themselves. It's um, private actions that are just impacting them. So this can be choices related to their body. It can be related to choices of uh, social activities. Um, can be related to um, you know, what they want to do in their free time. So we see here Sam right, is choosing to read a book as compared to exercising. This could be um, you know, someone choosing to work on a Mac as compared to a PC. This could be someone choosing to wear sunglasses to block the sun as compared to a sun hat. So the idea with the personal domain is it really just is impacting that individual 
themselves and outside of any type of judgment. So individuals tend not to judge actions that are classified in this personal domain. So as I said, when I do my uh, research with young children, I will ask them, I'll present those different story cards that I just shared with you, and I'll ask them if those story card characters, if what they're doing, is it okay? Is it a little bad or is it bad? And the results that I have found and social domain theorists um, have found, this, so this research has been repeated um, many times over, is that children and adolescents are judging transgressions in that moral domain more serious than social conventional transgressions. So they would say it would be worse to, let's say, bully a classmate as compared to wearing a hat down the hallway at school. And why this is really important and why we need to give children and adolescents credit for this distinction that they're making is because if you think about authority figures, whether that be their primary caregivers or their teachers or religious leaders or sports coaches, um, they're going to be told by these authority figures, you know what, you shouldn't be wearing a hat at school, right? You shouldn't bu bully that classmate. Um, you know, you shouldn't sit on the back of that chair, sit in your seat, right? But children and adolescents are distinguishing for themselves, right, that it's worse to have these transgressions in the moral domain. So they're saying, you know what, I get that I'm disrupting the social order when I wear a hat at school, but it's actually worse to bully someone. So even though they're getting feedback from authority figures, right, that they shouldn't do either, they're making a distinction for themselves that it's worse to harm someone physically or psychologically. So as I said, I think we need to give children and adolescents credit for that, right? That they are doing some internal reflection and making that value judgment themselves and not relying on these external authority figures to tell them what is worse, right? What's more uh, severe in terms of an action. And then the other really nice piece of this data is that we look at this personal domain and we see that children, and once again, adolescents are saying, you know what, who am I to judge? Right? What a person chooses to do if they choose to work on a Mac or a PC, right? if they choose to get sparkling water or still water, right? that's, that's their choice. I'm not going to put any type of judgment on that. All right? So we see that for events that can be categorized in this personal domain, they are not passing judgment. They're saying, nope, I, I'm not going to judge this event at all. So clearly, very distinct categories here. And the results here are statistically significant, meaning these are meaningful differences that we're seeing here in terms of how children are classifying these events. Okay, so I've just shared with you actions that can be very neatly categorized into one of these three domains. But as you all know, our world is quite messy. And we can think about events that can't be so nicely categorized into just one domain, right, or just one bucket. So these are known as mixed domain issues. And the idea here is some individuals might look at these actions or events as part of the moral domain, and other people may look at them as part of the personal domain or the social conventional domain. So examples of this might be, um, you know, thinking about uh, same-sex relationships, or it could be premarital sex, it could be getting a tattoo, right? Um, so the idea here is that some people may categorize these events as part of that moral domain, and other people may categorize them as part of that personal domain. Now, the topics I just gave, I shared with you, are really not appropriate to be researching with a young audience, right? So I had to think about what was a topic that I could work with young children um, that got at this idea of mixed domain issues. So I focused on the act of eating meat. And we can imagine that for some children, they would look at it through this moral lens, focusing on the harm, the suffering, right, that these animals endure as they're being raised for meat product, and then even that when they go through that slaughtering process. And we can also imagine that they're focusing on animal rights, right? So they would be interpreting this act of Sam eating meat as part of that moral domain. And in fact, I did see this with my research, research participants. So they had these quotes that you really see where they are highlighting that harm and suffering that the animal is enduring, or they're focusing on those animal rights. So these quotes that we have here really would be categorized as part of that moral domain or an interpretation from that moral perspective. Now, it's also possible, though, 
that some children are going to look at eating meat as part of the personal domain, right? This is an event that just um, is impacting me. It's my choice, what I choose to put in my body, um, outside of judgment from other people. Um, and once again, I did find that some of my children in my sample focused on eating meat as part of this moral, excuse me, personal domain. So we see here their reasoning when they cut it from this personal perspective is focusing on, well, I just don't like the taste of it, right? It, does, it's not, it doesn't taste good to me. Or they're focusing on the health aspects. There are healthier options for me. There are healthier options for my body, right? I want to have uh, a different type of, um, you know, I, I want to have more vegetables in my diet. So we can see that these explanations are really focused on that very personal nature of eating meat and how it's just impacting them. So I argued, right, that certainly we see with these young children that they're looking at eating meat as a mixed domain issue. Some are looking at it from this moral perspective. Others are looking at it from this uh, pers as a personal choice. So I also did uh, research with my, the, excuse me, my uh, children participants related to environmentally impactful actions. So here we see Sam who's choosing to throw out a um, can instead of recycling it. Okay, so once again, we can imagine for some participants, they're looking at this action through that moral perspective, focusing on the harm, right, the, the suffering that the environment endures, whereas other people are looking at this and saying, what I choose to do with my trash, right, that's, that's, that's private, that's personal, right? You, you don't have a right to judge that. So we can actually think about a lot of choices that would fit into this idea of environmentally impactful events. Maybe it's plastic or paper, right? Um, if you are, uh, you know, getting your water from a water fountain or buying bottled water, um, you know, what type of car are you driving? How you choose to get to work? Are you carpooling, right? Are you riding a bike? Um, are you, you know, driving your SUV by yourself, right, into the city every day? So we can imagine, right, with these events, some people may be saying, that's personal choice, right, the type of car that I drive or how I choose to get to school every day or, you know, to my office. Whereas other people are like, may interpret that as a moral choice, thinking about that harm that would be done to the environment by, um, you know, always getting a water bottle, you know, plastic water bottle when they're thirsty as compared to refilling up at a water fountain. So once again, with my young participants, I did see that they looked at these environmentally impactful actions as mixed domain. Some looked at it from that moral perspective, others through that personal perspective. Okay, so hopefully even these examples of eating meat and these environmental issues, you can see how these would be applicable to adolescents and adults as well as young children. So I want to take now the conversation to something that we are all dealing with in society today related to our, the pandemic that we're experiencing. So I'm going to argue that one of the reasons why there is so much tension um, and divisiveness around an issue like wearing a mask is because people are interpreting this through different domains. So we have some people who are looking at wearing a mask as part of that moral domain, right? And they're focusing on the harm, potential suffering, right? They're, they're focusing on the welfare of individuals and thinking about their health. So they're looking at it through this moral lens. And then there's other individuals who are looking at wearing a mask as a personal choice, right? It's a decision that they make for themselves. It is re related to their bodies and they don't feel that other people have a right to be telling them what they can and can't be doing, right? As applies to their body. So I share this with you because I think it's helpful for us to think about how the same action, right, wearing a mask can be interpreted so differently by different individuals. And so hopefully, you know, when you, when you, you know, are engaged in a conversation with someone or, you know, you see someone who is uh, doing something differently from what you would be doing, whether that's wearing a mask or not wearing a mask, now you have a sense of their perspective and how they're looking at this action through a different lens than you are. So hopefully this will help teach us a little bit of tolerance, right? And understanding how not everybody's interpreting these actions in the same way that we are. And if you want to try to persuade um, someone, let's say, to wear a mask or you know, persuade them that it is your choice not to wear a mask, you can think about what's that argument that you want to build? How are you going to present your argument from that personal domain or 
from that moral domain, focusing on the harm and suffering or um, you know, uh, welfare. So another example of this is certainly getting the vaccine, right? So once again, related to the pandemic and thinking about how some individuals are looking at this from that moral perspective, others are looking at it as a personal choice. So when I shared with you these examples related to young children, you know, it's like, how does this relate to us? But we can see that this idea of mixed domain issues doesn't just relate to children, right? We can think about how it applies to teenagers, to adults. And hopefully, as I said, when we think about the issues surrounding this pandemic, it will give us a sense of how not everybody's interpreting the same action, right, from the same perspective. And in that sense, right, allow us to be a little bit more tolerant and understanding how people can have a different perspective or a different viewpoint from us. Thank you.